Hey, this is Matthew with BI Polar. In today's data culture video, we're going to take a look at the importance of stakeholder buy-in for managed self-service business intelligence. Let's take a look. During the introduction for this series, I mentioned that a lot of what I'm presenting are lessons and techniques that I have seen in my day-to-day -day work with global enterprise Power BI customers who have successfully implemented a data culture built on managed self-service business intelligence. And today's video is really something that I have learned. It was something that I didn't see coming. And honestly, it's not something that I have seen explicitly documented elsewhere, but it ties back to our previous video on motivation because it gets down to how the human brain works and what we value and what we don't. One thing that I saw when I started working with these large Power BI customers was that the ones that seemed to have the greatest handle on managed self-service BI, so they've got lots and lots of authors, but those authors are producing value and not just producing reports, was that they did some things that were in common that other customers or, or other organizations did not, and one of the things that I started hearing again and again was the idea of having the authors who are getting a pro license for Power BI, so specifically getting the permission to publish a report, or sometimes even permission to get Power BI desktop installed on their local machine, they had to do something to earn this privilege. And perhaps the lowest bar that I've seen is that they need to complete a sign-up form. They have to go through and check to say, this is what I'm gonna use it for, I have a legitimate business purpose. Yes, I understand that there are data privacy regulations or rules that control what I can do with the tool or what I'm allowed to do with the tool. They submit a form and they get a license uh, issued to them. Sort of the, the, the simplest and the lowest bar. A few organizations have taken this to the next level where they have what, what they describe as a data covenant. So this is basically a sign-up form, but instead of saying, may I please have a license, what it says is, I agree to abide by these principles of use for the data that I'm working with and for the reports that I'm developing. There's no teeth behind it, so there's the organizations that I've talked to, they don't actually have uh, an automated enforcement mechanism, but they know that everyone who is authoring Power BI content has completed this covenant. Think code of conduct. They can assume that anything that is published either meets it, or they will have a means for redress if it doesn't meet the, uh, the terms of the covenant. The next thing that I hear is that sometimes organizations will require users to take a test, like to take and pass a test uh, before they're allowed to get a pro license or to get access to, uh, to Power BI Desktop. And the first time that I heard this, I was, I was kind of confused because you want more people to be authoring. So I asked, well, how many people fail the test? So, you know, how many people say, I want to use Power BI, I want to publish reports for my team and aren't allowed to do that? And the answer that I've heard consistently from these customers is, oh, none of them fail. Everyone who completes the test passed the test because it's very simple and we've given them the resources that they need to easily pass it. But the act of taking the test makes them think about their use of the tool differently, which sounds very much like what we saw in the previous examples with the covenant or the request form as well. The final example that I've heard more and more regularly is that some organizations will require authors to complete basic author training before they get the license that allows them to publish. Now this is the highest of the bars that I've heard uh, regularly mentioned because it basically means that they need to invest their own time to go through and to learn about connecting, to learn about visualizing, to learn about the capabilities of the tool. And then again, they need to pass the test or complete the form 
uh, and typically this ties in with a learning management system or similar thing that the organization already has so that they can verify that the training was actually completed. But all of these things have something in common. They're all rooted in the fact that as human adults, we value things more when we had to work to earn them. If someone gives you something, you don't value it as much as if you had worked and purchased that thing yourself. Now, obviously there are exceptions. Uh, humans are complicated, so there's exceptions to any simple rule. But understand that when you make your authors put their skin in the game, when you make them work for it, they will value it more. And if you think about the, the I, I don't want to say the damage that can be done, but when you think about the consequences of people building and publishing and forgetting and abandoning, you can often end up with a morass of non-valuable self-service reports or other BI artifacts that are created because people don't value what they're building. They put it together, they throw it out into the world. Those things are less likely to happen if the people who have permissions to create that shared Power BI content or other self-service BI content have to work for it because they will value it more and they will understand better the guidelines in which they're expected to behave. I hope this quick video is useful. We'll see you next week.